Between the two of them, China and the U.S. are responsible for 40 percent of current day uh, carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere. And people may worry if every Chinese person, you know, live the same way as American people does, we may not have enough energy or resource to support that. The reason we put together this U.S.-China Green Energy Council is we wanted to bring together all the resources that we have on both sides of the Pacific. We want to bring people from business, from investment, from technology, from government policy, and from academia, all to work together to solve these problems. Uh, the reason we founded this uh, U.S.-China Green Energy Council is because uh, we have a common challenge. And, uh, uh, we have to meet this challenge collectively. There are in this country many people who think that uh, the Chinese uh, have not been very engaged in, in, in dealing with climate change. Since 1980, with the exception of uh, a few years, uh, China has been able to uh, uh, implement energy efficiency to the point where greenhouse gas emissions are much less than the growth of the economy. How many people in this country know that? If the government believes it's the right thing to do, they will do it and do it very quickly. So in that regard, actually we believe, you know, the, the Chinese, you know, may will take a quick action to cope with, with climate change, you know, in this country, you know, much more quickly than in other countries. Uh 就放心,所以現在這個理念,老百姓已經認可了,覺得電動車確實可以用。You can see we have two kinds of buildings. One is the office and one is the shopping center. First, let's go to the office. Uh, we can see different kinds of energy consumption. We have the yearly basis and the monthly basis, daily basis, and this is the uh, online data of all the electricity meters in the buildings. In the solar industry, you know, uh, Suntech has been working very closely with several uh, you know, U.S. solar companies in, in developing and commercializing technologies and also uh, you know, in uh, um, uh, how to uh, utilize this solar in a utility scale. We've been meeting with uh, various officials uh, in China, uh, talking with them about how to structure uh, laws and uh, regulations to encourage uh, investment in, in uh, solar energy and wind energy. One of the opportunities that some of our American uh, companies that we work with, partners that we work with, one of the opportunities they see in China is the possibility of scaling up. You could have a city like Shanghai, and Shanghai is looking very, very uh, carefully at alternative forms of public transportation, alternative energy for public transportation. If the Shanghai municipal government wanted to, they could mandate uh, hydrogen filling stations, for instance. And so they could mandate a whole new fleet of um, alternative transport vehicles. And they could make, they could provide subsidies to make this happen. So not only do you have government that's in a position to lay out an entire infrastructure, which you don't have in the U.S., um, but you also have economies of scale that you that if you did that, um, some Western companies, large uh, U.S. companies, I think, uh, feel that this would give them an opportunity that they, they don't have anywhere else in the world. Any solution to the problem caused by global warming uh, entails changing the way in which uh, people earn their living, uh, the way in which they do business, the way in which they interact with each other, the way in which they raise families, uh, and the way in which they um, envision the future in terms of material prosperity. 
the things that I think is important for us to analyze in our society when it comes to our consumption of things like energy is basically our attitudes about consumer goods and how we base our identities oftentimes around the things that we consume. Maybe I can't consume less, but I will consume better. I'll consume things which are more energy efficient. I'll consume things that have a smaller carbon footprint should anyone be able to figure out the commodity chain well enough to know what that means. Many of the ongoing green tech initiatives are being driven by students, either within the department here or campus-wide. Fred, tell me about your latest meter. Sure, so uh, this, uh, this one is actually to monitor the uh, electric consumption of uh, individual uh, plug load appliance. So if you want to know how much uh, electricity your toaster oven uses, you can just plug this into the uh, AC outlet. The Global Climate and Energy Project began here at Stanford in about 2002. And the goal of the project is to perform fundamental research to develop a whole suite of clean energy solutions. There are over 140 faculty at Stanford University who, who either teach energy-related courses or, or who do research related to, to energy. How about the idea of a cheeseburger footprint? Uh, like like uh, we, did, we calculated the carbon footprint of a cheeseburger, and it's, um, it's about two kilos of CO2, which is about 20 pounds, which is equivalent to driving your car like 25 miles. For one cheeseburger? It's a duty for every citizen on Earth, okay? Not just you and me, everybody. We have to unite together to combat with climate change. Otherwise, we will all fail.